Hello and welcome to Salisbury and Sweetenham Sports Podcast. This week is an extremely special week. We are absolutely honoured to welcome the man who masterminded the demise of the long-running champion of the world, Vladimir Klitschko, and also the trainer of a current heavyweight prospect, Huey Fury. We'd like to welcome Peter Fury. Um, welcome all board, Pete, and James, for that matter. Yeah, thank you. It's a pleasure to be on. Good stuff. Um, yeah, so there was a lot of uh, boxing over the weekend. Amir Khan um, made his return, and also Carl Frampton. Um, a defeated Nanito Donaire, an absolute legend of the sport. What did you make of Khan and Frampton's performances, Pete? Uh, first of all, Frampton, I thought he'd done a very polished performance. Uh, I thought uh, Donaire, he's they're always dangerous to the end, and he was. And it was a good uh, polished performance um, by Carl Frampton. You know, you couldn't re- you couldn't fault it. You know, look at that kind of level, you're going to get wet. So he comes through the test. He shows he's. Uh, very durable. He's got a good chin as well. And uh, if he can come through Donaire's uh, heavy shots and hooks, then he's, uh, he hasn't really got much to worry about with the toughness side of things. So it's a good performance. And um, onwards and upwards for Frampton. As far as Amir Khan's concerned, I saw his fight last night. He's been in the camp with us. Not literally in camp, but we're sharing the same facilities, same hotel, and uh, spent some time with him, him and his new trainer. Um, Joe Goosen, really top guy as well, and he's really seen to got back together. And uh, looking at his performance, it was faultless. You know, it was uh, it was power, it was speed. You couldn't you couldn't fault his performance. It was a spectacular win. No, yeah, I completely agree. Um, is Amir Khan oozing confidence to make that return to the world level? Do you think? Well, I know he is. Um, after talking with him, he um, he's matured a lot. He's had a lot of things going on in his life, and. Uh, you know, he, he's back and I believe he's going to be a lot better fighter for the experiences he's had. I suppose the next question is then, who wins, Brooke or Khan? Oh, well, you know, I've not got a magic wand. Uh, we have to see he hasn't when or if it ever happens. I know Amir has got other options available to him. And he's a big draw as well, so it's not just about all about him and Kel Brook. There's other major fights out there, so it's wherever the big money is, I assume uh, that's where they'll go. Where did your boxing... Uh, background come from Peter it's all in my mind you know I'm just a, a nutcase that likes boxing and how did you create the Fury style it's not much of a you know it's it's not much of a Fury style it's creating the it's making the fighter fight to his DNA and you know what he's capable of doing and getting the best strength out of that fighter of his capabilities his uh, dimensions and like I said gets back to the DNA you uh, adjust accordingly to the fighter's strengths you know, you play on them strengths and uh, you minimise minimalize the weaknesses. Yeah. Um, I suppose it, it's obviously a lot to do with what happens in the ring. But how important is it that a fighter's mentally prepared? Uh, it's, it's very important. That's why you get eight to ten week camps because uh, when you're fighting on such a serious scale, it's uh, championship boxing. You know, you have to, you know, you can't cut corners. Everything has got to be diligently done. You can't underestimate anybody, you know, when you take a fight, every fight's your world title fight, so it's got to be fully committed, um, a lot of resources, a lot of time, a lot of thought process, there's, there's quite a lot of detail to, uh, you know, championship boxing, you know, that's what it is, it's not, a, it's not a walk in the back. How did you make the adjustments to Tyson when he first came to you to get him to world level, Pete? Um, I'm not really here to discuss Tyson. It's about uh, the fighters I've got currently now. You know, we had a good era while that lasted, and now we're going to move on. And now it's the Yui Fury era and the other fighters I've got with me at the present time. But in answer to your question, it's uh, in answer to your question, it's just it's what it is. You make adjustments. It's not over 12 months. It takes years. Um, it, it takes it can take five years. It can take several years. It's a you know, it's, it's a lifetime's work for the fighter. Not overnight. How did Huey start off in boxing? Uh, Huey's always been interested in boxing. Uh, I think when he was five or six, he, uh, he always used to take him on the pads, little bits of stuff. He always wanted to train. I never guided him into boxing. He, was, he wanted it himself. And um, he said to me, he wants a box. So he boxed. He had a lot of amateur fights. Um, you know, early on in his career, I think he had about 25, 28 fights before he even 
you know, I never got to go to his fights. So, um, you know, I was, I was away at the time. So when I come out, I think uh, 14, 15, something like that, I got hold of him and, uh, you know, he's, he seemed to develop well. And, uh, you know, he's never looked back since. Was he always extremely naturally talented? Yeah, you just know when um, there is a natural talent there. Look, you can't make, you can't make uh, copper into gold. You know, that's first and foremost. You know, they've got to have that talent basis there. They've got to have the ingredients to be uh, a class fighter. And, you know, it's, it's, it's in, it is in the DNA. You, you polish it, it's like a diamond. You know, when it comes out the rock, it looks like an ordinary rock. By the time you finish polishing it, it comes up like a diamond. You know, you've got to have them fundamentals there. So, you know, it's, uh, that's just the way it is. But I knew from an early age, he had a, he had a very uh, good talent. He was very awkward. You know, he had uh, he had something about him. So you can just tell they've got something about him, even even from a very young age. His first fight back since the Parker fights against Sam Sexton, how do you rate him and how have preparations go? Um, I rate Parker very highly. He's a good world champion. Um, and that's it. So this, we're looking forward to getting, back, getting him back in the ring now and uh, getting this fight underway as soon as possible. And do you feel like he was a touch unlucky not to get a result against Parker? I mean... I personally thought it was an extremely close fight, and, and maybe Huey had done enough. Uh, you know, I, well, I was ringside, and I had Huey winning it by four or five rounds, so that's my opinion, and that's many other people's opinion. So, you know, I, I look at uh, what punches are going to land. You know, you can be a busy fool in there and not land anything out of frustration. Yeah. You know, so it's what's landed, what, what matters to me. So um, there's, a lot, there's a politics outside of that which I don't want to talk about. But that cost him the world title. Yeah. We move on, and um, we move on to bigger and better things. Hopefully, how's his motivation? Like after the disappointment of not getting the result, um, is his motivation there to to work his way up again? But when you say motivation, there's not a man in the ring that's demotivated him. You know, we're not looking at that as a loss for him. Yeah. You know, we know what went on behind the scenes, which I'm not prepared to discuss in public. Nope. So he knows what happened there. So um, you know, why should he be? demoted, why should we let other forces outside of the ring, you know, demonstrate exactly how he's going to be, you know, so, you know, he didn't get hurt, he'd done the 12 rounds comfortable, he showed he's at that world level, so he's got, he's got only to be happy from the performance he put on, and just t and on his 23rd birthday as well, you know, don't forget, this is the youngest world level heavyweight we've got right at the moment. Obviously, Huey's extremely talented and awkward, so is it really hard to get him fights? Well, he's definitely proven that since the Parker fight because um, I know Mick Hennessy and the rest of the team, you know, we're trying to get him fights and uh, it's just uh, to no avail. So, you know, thankfully, um, Sam Sexton, he's come up to, to the fight. It's a British title and uh, we're grateful of that. We look forward to getting that fight on. How long do you think it'll take before Huey gets back to world level? Obviously, hopefully, everything goes to plan against Sexton in his next fight. Um, how long do you think, Pete, do you think? It's only around the corner. Well, he could take uh, a world title fight in his next fight, but the politics in boxing, it could take anything. It could take 12 months, it could take 18 months. You know, who knows? You know, there's a lot of blockages uh, we've got to overcome, a lot of hurdles we've got to overcome of our journey being blocked. But like I said, it's the politics in boxing. You can fight for another world title tomorrow. Don't forget, you know, Ring Magazine, you know, the holy grail of boxing had you four or five rounds ahead in his last fight. So, like I said, you know, Parker, AJ. You know, AJ didn't do much different to what you did, in my opinion. So, like I said, it's, uh, he's ready for a world title tomorrow. But he's learned from it. He's learned from it. And uh, we're looking to see improvements again on May the 12th. Good. So, as a trainer, how would you go about crafting a game plan to defeat uh, Joshua or Wilder? Well, as and when that fight arrives, you know, um, I will look at it then. But um, I've got my own thought processes on it, like I'm sure everybody else has. And uh, we just uh, worked that game plan, and hopefully it uh, comes good on the night. Are you confident you might be able to land those fights? Well, who knows? Uh, the big fights, but I've always said, if you're good enough, then no matter what tries to stop you, you'll find a way. It's a matter of time, isn't it? How's Peter McDonough getting on? Peter McDonough's doing fantastic. He's... Uh, He's a little warrior, he's in the gym, he's training very hard at the moment, and he's looking forward to his fight. And um, yeah, it's, it's exciting for him as well. Um, 
I think he's a, I'm not sure if the opponents are going to be announced tomorrow at the press conference. Hopefully they will be. Um, but yeah, very interesting for Peter McDonough. He's, uh, he's definitely a, a story at 40 years of age. You know, he's, uh, he's strong. He's determined. You know, you know, please God, he does all good things. Do you think he's an inspiration to fighters that have had losses on the record and coming back and proving that they can still compete at a high level? Well, I definitely think so. If the, look, if the mindset is there and the determination is there, who's to say you can't do anything? You know, what Peter McDonough's done in the gym, you know, is just fantastic. And uh, he continues to do his work ethics are very, very good. So I don't see a problem. I think he's, uh, he's, he's definitely a hard night's work for anybody. How's it going training Savannah Marshall and how do her sparring sessions go with Peter? Yeah, they have some heavy sparring. Uh, you know, Savannah, she's a good puncher. She's um, hard to get Gail sparring for her, really. So she's doing very well. She's in their preparations at the moment. She's on again on May the 12th. She's on the card. So um, I'm excited to see um, the hair perform and uh, develop. Are there any differences between training a, a family member and then just somebody uh, who you're friends with? Not really. It's, uh, you, like I said... You work with every fighter to their strengths, you know, strengths and weaknesses, and uh, you just give the fighter the best style of what you think is best for them. You know, it's uh, it's a matter of opinion, but I train a certain way, and uh, the fighters seem to respond pretty good to it. So we just uh, we just there's no substitute for hard work. I will say that, and the rest of it is uh, learning, studying. It's not just about going in the gym, skipping a rope. You know, you've got to have some thought process behind it and be knowledgeable in what you're doing and understand that the fighter understands not to be too complicated just so they work on things because I'm only looking for in- increments of improvements. I ain't looking for big steps. So this is it. It's, a bit, it's over time, you know. It's, uh, it's not, like I said, world champions are not made from one day or one fight. Yeah, you could say that... Um that David Hay went against most of the things he said there um, in the first fight against Tony Bellew. How do you see the rematch going? I see the rematch going a lot better than the first fight. I think um, I think David Hay, after his layoff, I think he had the wrong mentality for the, for the comebacks. I think he was too heavy. It slowed his speed up. And the thing is, as well, when, you, when you're carrying power, you know, David Hay is untitled, but he's got one punch power. Why would you need to put another two stone on when you've already got that power? It doesn't make you hit any harder. What it does slows you down. So I think he's realised these, these errors and he's gone back to being um, as, as athletic and as sharp as he can possibly be and get back to boxing rather than think he can just walk in and tech people out with, with power because you've got to have the technique, you've got to have the speed and you've got to have the skill to land the power. You know, so I think it's going to be a lot better fight. I think Bellew's underrated. Bellew's a good fighter. And I think it's going to be a, be a good fight. And it's the one who wants it the most can uh, come through. It's not unless one makes a mistake and gets caught early. So it's going to be an interesting fight, that one. Obviously, against Parker, Huey proved he's amongst the elite in the division. And something we're seeing this year is the emergence of the World Boxing Super Series. Could, would Huey be interested in entering that sort of tournament if they were to do one for heavyweights? And could, what other fighters would you like to see in that tournament if there was one? I'd like to see the best fight the best, but you're not going to get that really because, um, you know, this is the heavyweight division. There's multi-millions involved. You've got Deontay Wilder now and you've got um, Anthony Joshua, you know. So maybe for all the rest of them to become mandatory, maybe it'd be a good idea. But uh, like I said, it's, uh, ultimately it's nice to pit the best against the best and uh, see who comes out on top. So I think it'd be a good thing. To stop all the politics, anyway. Who is the best then, Pete? The pound for pound best in the world, do you think? Who can say? Styles make fights. Um, you may not think somebody's going to do some good, and that somebody could upset the odds and cause uh, catastrophe. So the, the thing is, they've just got to fight, haven't they? And see who's the best. There's no no words are going to make you the best. You know, you can believe it. You can say it down a microphone, but you've got to get in there and physically do it and. Uh, Anything can happen. It's 12 rounds. It's 36 minutes, so anybody can do anything in that amount of time. How's training Ty Mitchell going, Pete? Ty Mitchell's doing great. He's ticking over. He's, uh, he's currently working on obtaining his licence. 
I know he's dealing with the Boxing Board of Control. Um, I know his dad, I know Mick Hennessy, they're, they're busy with it at the moment, trying to get him reinstated. So, uh, But he's just taking over. But if he gets his license back, he's a phenomenal light heavyweight for the division. He's exciting. Kid's got charisma as well. And, um, you know, this kid can genuinely fight. It's, uh, it'd be a shame, really, for him not to get licensed because, like I said, this, he's definitely entertaining and he can punch with both hands. So it's, uh, he's an exciting light heavyweight. Billy Joe looks sensational out in Canada against David Lemieux in December. How do you think he'd do against the elite in the divisions like Golovkin or Canelo or Daniel Jacobs? Only time will tell. He's he's done what they've done, so and he's beat the people they beat. So let's uh, let's see what happens. He's got as good a chance as anybody else. He's a very awkward southpaw, and you know you seldomly get a southpaw that's good on his feet and can move. You know, and in Billy Joe's case, he's got that. So he's a, he's dangerous. He's a, he's a bigger threat as anyone out there. A lot of the uh, travelling fighters have developed like a really sort of slick style with like Tyson, Huey, Martin Ward and Billy Joe. Is there any particular reason for that? Um, not really. It's uh, those fighters fight with distinctive style. It's, uh, if you're a mover, you don't put your arms up when you're too easy, do you? Because it uh, stagnates the movement. It depends what type of fighter you are. If you're a powerhouse, you know, and you're quick, you're very explosive short you squat then your style will be different so it just depends it's uh you know the, i believe but boxing is a sweet science it's not a strongman competition so there's a lot involved in boxing so to uh that's what you that's what ultimately you need that's what that's what separates greatness from not great things so like i said it's not called boxing for nothing who's your favorite fighter of all time peter i love all the great fighters i can take you right back so all of the great fighters I've uh, got admiration for. Um, you know, a- anybody that, uh, you know, that sticks that sticks to the game, you know, they don't falter. You know, they've had all their careers. <clears throat> you know, you look at Lennox Lewis, what he achieved. You know, that guy was at the top for 10 years. You know, nearly a decade. It's, you know, it's who's the best in them decades. So that's what counts. That's what you get Hall of Fame fighters. But going back to the olden days, all of the great fighters, you know, in the 1920s, going up to the 1960s, 70s, you know, it's, <clears throat> there's been some uh, great fighters in all divisions as well, not just the heavyweights. Other than the boxers you train, who's your favourite out there at the moment? Uh, good question. I've not really thought about it. Um, I think there's a lot of good fighters out there. Um, Lomachenko, he's a beautiful boxer. He takes all the boxes. Yeah. I like watching him. He's uh, something special to watch. Uh, <coughs> and I'm sure there are quite a few others that I can't just put my finger on right at the moment, but there's a lot of good talent out there. Thank you very much, Pete. That was an absolute pleasure to talk to you there. And I'd just like to no wish problem. you all the best with Huey and the other fighters that you train. And, and yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. I really appreciate it. And all the best with the podcast. Thank Take you. Take care. Thank you. Cheers, Pete. Thanks. When the bottles open, when the sky is grey, don't look for empty tokens or bow your head and pray. Reality is better than the great question of me. Cause people just need people and tonight and every day. Find your one true heart and let them see you right. Find your Get weak Hidden in our deepest folds And in our darkest thoughts One match can burn your bridges One word can